If you find my watercolour videos a little bit fast, I'm going to show you how to slow them down in this step-by-step -step beginner's watercolour tutorial using just two colours. Let's get started. Just click this little wheel here and then click playback speed. And if you click on that, you've got some choices, 75%, 50% and 25%. So you can try those out. The only thing is if I'm speaking, I might be speaking very slowly, but it is very helpful to slow down the tutorial. The first thing I'm going to get you to do is just mix up a sort of very pale orange wash. So put a bit of paint in your palette and add water. The more water you add, the paler the wash. The more paint you add, the darker the wash. So I'm going to add a little bit of the indigo now. Add lots of water to that, lots of clean water. You can use a pipette for this as well. I've seen some students use that. They get on quite well with a pipette. And then we're going to wet the paper with clean water. Well, mine's a little bit dirty now, so I've um, used the water from the mixing I've just done. But sometimes that adds to a little bit of tone now in the painting. So just wet that right down to the bottom. Certain papers require a little bit more wetting. I'm using Saunders Waterford 300 grams rough paper. I like it for landscape painting. It's a very, very forgiving paper. It allows you to paint longer. I've just loaded my brush and I'm just putting that lovely orange wash just a little bit randomly through the sky here and then a little bit through the little bit of this water we've got here and then a bit on our land in the foreground. So give my brush a rinse and then I'm going to go into the indigo and I'm just going to put a little bit of that indigo at the top and let it sort of run gently down into that orange colour. Rinse my brush and now I'm just going to use clean water to blend those two together. There. and using that indigo I'm going to put some of that indigo in the water as well almost like they're reflecting these these hills and mountains that we see here so look at that nice and simple just sort of very gentle wash and in the foreground I'm just going to put a little bit more of that indigo wash rinse my brush take all the excess water off and then go into the indigo give my brush a rinse and then into the orange. And I'm gonna make a slightly thicker wash. A bit more indigo. And I'm gonna use this, something called Damp in Damp. So I'm actually gonna paint some clouds here, some darker clouds, damp into damp. So my brush is damp, it's not as wet as it was before. And the paper is not as wet as it was before. So you have to be a little bit patient and wait for it to dry off a bit. I could have been a little bit more patient actually, but um, here goes. So there's some clouds there. And use a little bit of that wash in the foreground as well. So I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, welcome back. I've just blow dried the picture, just checking with the back of my hand. I usually use that just to make sure the painting's thoroughly dry without getting any greasy finger marks on the painting. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a flat wash, watery one, for the distance using a quite watered down, very watered down indigo. So I'm going to start painting wet on dry, fully loading my brush and start with the distant hill first and just paint that in. Always keep loading your brush and paint that along like so. Every sort of second or third stroke, tell yourself to load your brush so that you don't run out of paint and you keep the control in the watercolour painting. I'm just going to have to make a little bit more paint here, didn't make quite enough. And just paint that. It's always a good idea to make enough paint because it's quite difficult to get the right shade when you're in the middle of a wash. So um, just a little tip for you there. And I'm just going to come down. Here's a little awkward bit, just come down where the land sort of comes out a little bit. So we're just going to paint that there like so. And bring that right down into the water and maybe just break that edge up a little bit there. Especially if you're like me. Straight lines are 
always the trickiest thing to do. Okay, and then I'm going to use that wash, and this time rather than using a, doing a really flat wash, I'm just going to do more of a sweeping wash to get some texture. You can see this lovely texture it creates if you paint fast with watercolour, especially when you have lovely rough paper. So just with that indigo wash, I'm going to do that. Okay, welcome okay. back. As you can see, with watercolour painting, when you do a wash and after you blow dry it or leave it to dry naturally, it does actually dry that little bit paler. You can see that there, but it looks quite nice now with my clouds and my first lot of mountains. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the very similar wash of the um, indigo, making it just slightly darker. Remember this time, I didn't have enough paint last time, so I'm really sort of making sure I make enough so I don't run out. It's all these little key things that really do help you with your watercolour painting. So now I've fully loaded my brush, it's got a lovely point on this brush as well, and I'm just going to paint the next layer of mountains. So look at that, just sort of crinkle up your edge there so you get a nice edge, and just keep loading that brush. It's really important to load that brush I've just decided to go off piece there, pardon the pun. And then just come down to the water's edge again, coming across, right over everything, so that you're building up this tone, you're working light to dark, wet on dry, with this lovely indigo paint. All my materials, by the way, will all be, what I've used is all gonna be in the details listed below this video. I'm just putting a few little ripples here as well with the tip of my brush. And again, I'm gonna repeat what I did before, a few little sweeps, look at that. Just a few little sweeps. Think about watercolor painting, it is less is more. It's really easy to keep sort of tweaking things and making, you know, trying to perfect them, and you end up ruining it. So just make yourself stop. And that's what exactly what I'm going to do now and give my painting another blow dry. As you can see, now my furthest mountain looks much further away because of this other layer in front of it. And you might be asking yourself, well, why didn't I just paint that, that bit down to there and the other bit down to there? It's because what we're going to get is these layers overlapping each other. So one looks behind the other and it really creates the depth. It's like a bit of magic, the magic of watercolour. And no other medium really gives you that as well, so it's quite exciting. So I'm going to build up another layer now, just here. I did have a little bit here, didn't I, in my foreground here. So I'm going to crinkle up some of the edges and put that in there. And bring that across here. Keep loading that brush. I find sometimes with the hair dryer, because the paper's still warm, the paint dries really, really quickly. So it's just being aware of that. So I'm just gonna put another layer up here. Keep loading that brush, keep loading. Don't be afraid of really wet paint. It's, I've took me years to learn that the wetter it is, the more control you have. And when you have it too dry, when you're doing washes, you actually, mess them up more. So it's just using this bead of paint and just moving it around, you get more control. It might feel a bit weird and at first, but the more you practice it, the better. I've given so that a blow see. dry. What I'm gonna do now is just paint a little bit of the water. So I'm wetting it, wetting the paper. I'm just gonna to touch a little bit of orange in there and then I'm gonna to go to that indigo that I've got some left, some left in the, in the palette there. And I'm just gonna put that like another triangle here just to reflect a little bit of the, the mountain there and just put a few little ripples through there. Okay guys, a quick lesson on painting people. Okay, so I've got my piece of paper here. I'm gonna do this on a really large scale, but when I come to do the painting, go back to my original painting, I'm gonna do it on a smaller scale, but this is, this is how you paint or this is how I give students a lesson how to paint little people in a picture. But what I tell them to do is do an arch window like that, really simple arch window, two lines for legs, one longer than the other, and a tiny, tiny head. And then you can put like an arm, arm out here, like an elbow, arm down by the side, like that. 
Now that looks like a really strange person, but when you put it on a small scale, it seems to work for some reason. So it's all about proportion. So what I'm gonna do now is just use that indigo and a little bit of orange in there, and I'm just gonna paint this person now. Just keep loading the colour. Now the head is really small, but what I tend to do is when I start painting it, I will just make it slightly bigger. I always tell students to make the head really tiny because nine times out of ten, a lot of when you're painting people, everyone seems to make the heads too big with the proportion. Now I'm going to draw these, paint these lines, and that looks really odd. But what I'm going to do now is from the centre of the jacket there, I'm just going to come down and do a little triangle, and the same here little triangle a little bit of a car shadow seems to always work and hey presto you've got quite a decent looking person and on a small scale that works so well so let's go back to our painting small. so remember to start off with that arch window that arch window remember the two lines for the legs I'm going to put two people side by side there we are one shorter than the other and remember the little pin heads, and then bring maybe a shoulder, uh, elbow out, etc. I'm just going to broaden that person's shoulder, maybe give this person longer hair, etc. Put a few little posts or something here as well. So now I'm going to paint that. I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. And put a little bit of shadow on there as well. I might have to go to an even smaller brush just for the heads. I don't want to make the heads too big. So just put in the little heads here and there. You can maybe make the trousers a bit darker, etc. A little bit of shading to this side as well. I could just soften that and just soften that that way with a damp brush. Bit of shadow under there and I put some little posts and things just here just to give it a little bit of detail in the foreground there. A little bit of shadow from the posts as well just to give it a bit of interest and I'm going to give another layer just in the foreground just to build up that bit more of a dark just here. Touch more just along here as well there. and possibly a few little ripples in the water just a little bit of movement in the water so we can just put a few little ripples here Tiny bit of dark just underneath there again just to put a bit of reflection in on that hill that's just there coming that way and a little bit on that one as well so one more stage to go this is going to be our darkest darks I'm just going to paint it over the nearest bit of land here really load that brush again so it kind of comes forward from the other bit of land look at that now those lovely layers it's just building up all the time working light to dark in watercolor and it creates these lovely effects 3d effects there might just make my people just a touch darker as well just on that side. I don't want them to look paler than the hill in the distance. So we'll just make them a bit darker there. And I love to give my paintings a little spatter. And that's just putting a bit of paint on your brush, quite wet and just can look like a few stones and things. To finish off my painting, 
So I really hope you enjoy this tutorial. And if you'd like to get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Just click Patreon. Thanks so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.